there is a few things that I think in the preparedness communities that, that we get wrong. And I think that there is something that we can learn from how the military structures and organizes and equips itself as some positive lessons learned for some things that we can do. Because I hear from folks all the time, like, Top, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not the youngest anymore. I'm not in the best shape anymore, whether it's due to injuries or whatever the case may be. And I'm trying to figure out how I can fit in with a like-minded group of folks. So first off, man, you need to find some dudes that, that you fit in and that share your same value system, right? But if you are already in some sort of preparedness community, I want you to consider how the military structures, organizes, and equips itself. You see, at first glance, when you do look at the military, you're going to notice that only 10% are the gun shooters, right? Only 10% are infantry. Everybody else is support for these roles. But everybody, the only thing anybody wants to do is be a gunfighter, right? Well, it takes a lot more support than, than we often think of. And this is one of the most critical downfalls or shortcomings of every unorganized militia that exists. Because everybody just wants to be a, a gunfighter, man. Just go out and look at all the uh, gun tuber pages and, and Instagram uh things that do well it's all about folks who are getting trigger time and dude you should get some trigger time and i'm not advocating against that but let's take a deeper dive into what those other 90 percent of the population of the military is and not specifically so much as far as the branches or the regiments right all of, all of the mos's because we all have different skills that we bring to the table but let's look at how a company battalion is organized. Because you're not going to make it if you're just running fire teams and squads. We need to think and have a little bit big, bigger picture than this. So down at the company level, man, you have a, a headquarters platoon or that it has in its arsenal a training room and an orderly room. And the reason that it only has this much is because they don't have the manning or the staffing to, and they don't need to do much more than that. But if we look up just one level to the battalion, we can see an entire range of staff that supports the commander and, more importantly, supports the companies down below, unless they get it twisted and get it backwards. So we have a, an, an administrative section, right? They handle all the roles. They know all the people. They, they know all of the strengths and weaknesses about each person. And they are looking outwardly to fill shortages. Like, hey, I need this particular job, this particular skill set with this particular experience. And they are actively reaching out to find, to fill those shortages. Something that we don't do well at all. And then you have an, an, an uh, intelligence section called the S2, right? First one is the S1. The next one is the S2. It's, it's the intel. Now, down at the company level, most of the time these dudes get hung up doing nothing but weather, right? But it's a lot more than that. We need folks who are dedicated to looking and researching and filtering out all of the garbage, right? There's a ton of information out there, but what is actionable? What, what is the actual intelligence that we need? That's what these dudes should be doing. And then feeding this and disseminating this information out to the rest of the group. Now, the meat and the potatoes of a operation uh, comes from the next one, 
and it is your operations. You have current operations and you have future operations. The co-ops guys, if you will, are, are, are focused in on everything that's locked in, right? The, well, and let's start off with the, with the future operations. The, the FUOPs guys, they look out into the future, right? Six months, 12 months, 18 months. And you're looking for places to train. You're looking for what is going to be needed. Both equipment, personnel, resources, money, time. And you're, you're actively seeking out these training opportunities, putting them on the calendar, developing some sort of, of, of an initial plan, and then once that's done, you pass it down to your current ops guys, right? And then they refine the plan. They get, they get it actionable for the, the unit that's going to get ready to go train. Now, typically also in here, we need to be considering uh, any other taskings that we have, our organization, our structure. Um, and so there's a lot that, that we should be doing when it comes to plans and operations that, that we, in, in my experience, in looking and listening to folks, that doesn't happen very often. And then, and that's your S3, and then the, your next group of folks are those who are dedicated to supplies and logistics, right? They're taking stock. They, they, they know what the organization has. They know what the organization needs for those training opportunities. And they are seeking out to fill what is needed, right? That's, that's your S4 in a nutshell. And next up is your information technology guys. They handle databases. They handle communication infrastructure, both uh, line of sight stuff, like, like some radio stuff. And they also handle internet stuff. And sometimes the two can become interlocked and interwoven. But they're looking at how are we going to communicate up and down within ourselves and how are we going to communicate up and out? Something that is dreadfully needed. Too many times we get caught only worrying about how to talk to ourselves. But we need some folks with some dedicated time and training to figure out how to communicate out beyond our little local sphere, right? After that, and that's your, your S6 in a nutshell, after that, uh, we have, at the battalion level, that, that's pretty much it. Once you get above that, you get up to, you know, brigade and division levels, then, then some of these become more drilled down, if you will. You'll have a, some special staff, and you'll have some folks who are dedicated on, on nothing but uh, money, specifically, as well as... Uh, detailing out some of the some of the other uh, things that get done to manage and, and control organizations for upper echelon, and we don't need to get so locked into structure that we lose focus of what it's all about because that's ha that's what happens in the military as well. People become so focused on structure and and telling the higher that they are good to go that. Instead of supporting the line units, they support their own, themselves, right? Does that make sense? And it's a shame that that happens. But if we look at things at, on face value and say on paper, how do we structure and organize ourselves? And how do we equip ourselves to get better? So you probably, maybe right now, you don't have some folks who can be dedicated into these areas. Like everybody is on that freaking fire team. So what you do is you figure out the strengths and weaknesses of each person and say, who can do this? Who has experience in, in, in working on these needs? Maybe it is that Intel group. Maybe it is that uh, information and technology group. Right? And so the fire team supports itself. 
but actively look for folks because I'm telling you, that team, there are so many people out there who just want to get plugged into a community. But they're like, man, I, I, I can't do what I used to be able to do, but I can cook. Well, you know what you need? You need to freaking cook. I say, man, I, I can't go off and, and do all the things that I used to used to could have done, but damn, I'm a good mechanic. You need some freaking mechanics. You need some welders. And they should participate in all of the training, right? And you need some medics. You need all of the things, all of those branches and, and, and jobs, if you will, that exist. You need them in your organization, Primarily for the skill sets that they are good at. Think of all of the things that you need in life to sustain things where you live. Food, water, mechanical stuff, plumbing stuff, logistic stuff. That's a big one, right? All of the stuff. You need people who are dedicated at doing these jobs. Not just going to the range and plinking down some some rounds down range, right? Yeah, I know. That, that's, that's what's sexy. That's what sells. That's what everybody wants to do. And as important as that is, you need a lot more support. Now, once you, once you can begin to grow both structurally, right? How we organize, all right? Those at S1, 2, 3, 4, 6. Once we had some of these structures figured out and we can begin to add more folks in into the fold. Now instead of just running a a small fire team or a squad-sized operation, now you have something that's a lot closer to a company because all these other folks out there, like they, again, they need to participate in all the training. They need to come to all the meetings. They need to come to all the events. They need to get some, some range time. They need to get some physical fitness time in. But now you have something that is, that, that, that is wicked. Team, I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts and your comments down below, specifically about how well organized your unorganized group of dudes is, right? What are some of the, the, the goals that you have as far as how to improve your foxhole? What are some skill sets or areas of, of control and operation that you're looking to add into your group right now? Because down in the comments below, team, that, that's where the community happens. And I'm looking forward to seeing and hearing from you all. So, I, team, I appreciate you guys. Until then, you stay out there, you keep grinding, and you stay stoked. <laughs>